It may have been the acres and acres of woods, or maybe the pond right in the middle of the property. Perhaps a rushing brook that you can hear from hundreds of yards away, or a combination of all of it. But John Restivo and his husband, Aiden Mott, knew they wanted to buy this property in Foster when they visited in 2014. We fell in love the second we saw it. It's, um, we loved that the house was old. It was an 1811 house. We loved uh, all the outbuildings. We loved the history. They christened it Legends Creek Farm and over the past five years have increased the number of beehives and now have more than a dozen goats. Mott began making a line of chemical-free products that include soaps, lotions, salves, honey, and candles. He has developed a booming internet business based right here. But they wanted to do more. So he designed and built a 1,600-square-foot barn that would house a commercial kitchen, gift shop, and processing center upstairs. But to make breads, desserts, and other food products, they needed to drill a public well and get approval from the Rhode Island Department of Health to use it. Restivo, an attorney who specializes in commercial real estate, met with top officials at the Health Department in early 2018. He said their response was a foreshadowing of things to come. I'd say early on, there was sort of a, a negative tenor to the project. There, we were told, um, look into getting, uh, using a kitchen somewhere else first, maybe see if you can produce products if they're successful before you make this investment. Um, we were told that getting a public water supply could run anywhere from ten to $15,000. And are you sure your business can support that right now? And we knew what our business could support. And, and so we thought, all right, well, the cost isn't, isn't the biggest issue for us right now. We know that we need to build this building. We know that this is where we need to go in order for our, building to, our business to expand uh, and grow in the direction that we want it to. Certainly at no point did we get uh, the indication that it was going to be impossible to do. Why the skepticism? The Department of Health pointed to a sprawling, decades-old junkyard next door, Wright's Auto Parts. Health officials said it posed a significant risk for contamination, even though there is no evidence there is contamination at the site where they plan to sink the well. Their engineer submitted a 24-page application last summer. It was denied in October, so the engineer went one step further in his argument, pointing to the slope of the property leading to the junkyard. And this stream, called Hemlock Brook, that divides the two properties. And he submitted a revised application in December. As an initial reaction to the Department of Health's denial of our first application, where they said that they thought that the junkyard uh, was possibly contaminating uh, the groundwater, um, he did a whole analysis that included Hemlock Brook uh, as a hydrologic break between the two properties. So any contaminants that could be running uh, through the surface water and precipitation and stormwater runoff would go into Hemlock Brook away from our property. If you go stand and look down there, there's a huge, it's like a valley almost. The water runs through the middle of the two properties and any, any surface water is going to go down the hill and be carried away before it could even enter our property. The health department remains unconvinced. It declined our request for an on-camera interview, but a spokesman tells the Hummel Report in an email it has suggested that Restivo and Mott do a, quote, hydrogeological investigation. Simply put, extensive testing deep into the bedrock to see which way potential contaminants would flow. Restivo said his engineer estimates the cost between forty dollars and $70,000 with no guarantee of approval from the state. You get the rejection letter, what'd you think? I mean, we were devastated. I was... At that point, we had the building was constructed, the septic system was approved, the everything. Yeah, was. we had, uh, we saved every penny to do this. From the beginning, moving back here was the ultimate goal to get a commercial kitchen on our farm. That was the goal, and when they shot it down, it uh, we were upset mostly because they didn't, call the engineer with questions. They didn't ask us any questions. They just red stamped it and said no without, without giving us a chance to even have a discussion with them. Yeah, I remember having a, a sinking feeling when it came through. I, 
I don't think we thought it was even a possibility that it could get denied. Based off what our engineers said, they're not going to deny it. It's just a way of how to make it work if they had any reservations about it. Restivo and Mott have already spent $150,000 for the two applications, engineering and construction of the barn. So Restivo and his engineer met last month for 90 minutes with top officials at the health department. What I saw coming out of that meeting was a real, I, I think, real effort by the Department of Health to try and find a way to say no. They weren't trying at all to find a solution. They were trying to basically convince me this is never going to happen. We're not going to approve this. You shouldn't be trying to get this approved. Um, and it was, it was really um, upsetting. You know, at this point, we're more than a year into the process. We've invested a ton of time and money. Um, and to have these people saying, and, and to have them not even have, not even know why they're denying it under the right, not even be able to justify the denial. Like you would think that it would be such a, uh, a harsh act because it is a harsh result for us that they would be confident and they would know why they're denying it. Restivo said it is ironic to him that the health department is concerned about potential contamination, but not going after the source of the problem pointing instead to the Department of Environmental Management as responsible for protecting surface and groundwater quality. Restivo noted that Hemlock Brook ultimately feeds into the Situate Reservoir, the state's primary drinking water supplier. That was what we thought was the most, <laughs> you know, Twilight Zone aspect of it was they're saying that they're concerned about our drinking water to the point where they don't want us to use it for commercial but at the same time, they're saying that there's nothing they can do about the drinking, about the possible contamination of the drinking water that feeds the entire state. 60% of the state gets there. Yeah. Water from that stream goes right into the Situate Reservoir. Why can't they do anything? They don't want to do anything. I don't think they've tried. <laughs> the Hummel report discovered the DEM has been investigating the junkyard based on a complaint Restivo filed nearly a year ago. In December, it issued a letter citing the owner with a handful of pollution violations. And just this week, DEM, after further investigation, assisted by the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, issued a new round of freshwater wetland and water pollution violations, saying the junkyard owner has to restore land it clear-cut when it was increasing the number of cars it was storing from 500 to 2,000 over the past several years. Restivo and Mott watched as the trees came down and the pile grew next door. When we signed the contract on this house, that was a beautiful empty field. And we moved in, and then shortly after, there were thousands of cars on it. I think in less than a year, it just filled up immediately with, with cars. What'd you think as you saw those cars come in? We didn't, we didn't care. I said, it's his business, this is our business. We believe we wanna be left alone. And that's why we bought this place was to be left alone. So we left him alone, and we left him alone until we got our denial letter and found out we have neighbors that have been reporting this guy for years for every single thing that he does wrong and we stayed out of it until it affected us financially and we couldn't stay out of it anymore. Restivo and Mott are in a catch-22. While the junkyard owners have been cited for violations of state law, a DEM spokesman said that doesn't necessarily translate into definitive contamination. Quote, at this point, our inspectors have not documented a release of contaminants from the property that requires a more comprehensive investigation. We have no information to suggest that the junkyard is a major source of contamination, but cannot say definitively that it is clean either. We don't want <laughs> contaminated drinking water. No, Even we if don't. we got all the approvals and we pull water out of there and it's contaminated, we're not going to fight to drink it. Uh, our goal <laughs> is to have clean drinking water. They're convinced Right now, the Department of Health is convinced that our groundwater is contaminated. And so if the goal is to have clean drinking water instead of just stopping a commercial kitchen from happening in some corner of Foster, if the actual goal is clean drinking water, then there's got to be some flip side to that policy that's not just denying new wells, but also removing the source of contamination. Restivo said if the health department denies its revised application, he will likely appeal to a state hearing officer but they are frustrated with the process.
it makes me not want to do it anymore in Rhode Island. Um, and as John said, I just said, let's go. Let's, as much as I love the property, I'm not going to stop. It's my life and I'm going to do what I want. And I will just take it to another state and I'll grow my business there. In Foster, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.